Hey, and welcome back to another episode of the Higher Up Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Smoke, or Higher Up Wellness. And today we're going to be talking about a topic that is very near and dear to my heart. Now, it's not about how to get fitter forever. It's more of a mindset conversation. But I get asked a lot about self-help books or mindset books that really changed my life. And I've put a lot of thought into that. And on the way here to the place where I record, I thought there's really only one concept that I think about and try to embody every single day when it comes to every self-help book I've read, every mindset shift from every guru or mentor I've spoken with, and it's the concept of extreme ownership. So we're going to be talking about what that means and what it means to me and what I think it should mean to you. So that's the goal of the conversation today is to talk about what extreme ownership can do for you and how it permanently changed my life forever in every way, fitness, nutrition, work, relationships, and everyday life. Before we get started, I do want to quickly say a couple of things and make two quick announcements. I have launched a community on school called the Higher Up Lifestyle. The goal is to get a group of like-minded people in the same place, in the same area to share wins, be positive, spread value, and on my behalf, share information or on my part rather. So what I do in there is I release a video series weekly called a playbook on a different topic of fitness, nutrition, mindset, or success. So far, we have a fat loss playbook a workout program playbook, and a bulking playbook. It's a chronological video series where I tell you step-by-step how to do these things. This week's video series will be From Couch to Marathon, a running playbook. So I'm going to teach you exactly how to build your own endurance and aerobic capacity to become a marathoner from starting from zero. So if you're interested, the link will be in the YouTube description. I'd love to see you there. And it's a great, tremendous place where you can post, you can ask questions, you can answer questions and help others. And this month, we're launching a competition where the most active member in the community gets a walking pad on me. So I'm excited to do that and give you guys more incentives to get active in the community and build this into something bigger than ourselves. The next thing I want to say quickly is I am lucky enough and fortunate enough to be sponsored by a fantastic company called Nutrition Solutions. You've probably heard me yap about it in my content at some point. I've been talking about them months before they reached out and offered me a sponsorship. So I'm grateful and humbled for the opportunity. It has saved me over 70 hours of time in the last five months that I've been able to put back into building my own business. So if you value your time the way you should and you're looking for high quality, nutrient dense, grass fed protein sources and organic non-GMO sources of produce and vegetables, please give Nutrition Solutions a look. I don't think there's a better company in the space from a quality standpoint, but also the CEO and the company's mission, vision, and values are aligned from top to bottom. And it's something that I'm very proud to be a part of, and I hope you'll consider. If you're interested, you can use code HU, letter H, letter U, for 15% off your first order. That's all for the ad reads. (laughs) Now, let's get into the episode itself. Extreme ownership. What does that mean? I'm going to tell you what it means to me. It's a concept that's been popularized by none other than the great Jocko Willink, a former Navy SEAL who is now a profound motivational and keynote speaker. And in 2020, I was fortunate enough to be subject to one of his keynote presentations. The company that I came on with after college in the heat of COVID actually uh, signed him on to be the keynote for their 2020 Milner Summit Conference was what they called it. And It was virtual, so that kind of sucked because I was hoping for the opportunity to meet him and it was going to be in person. But regardless, we got to listen to Jocko speak live about the concept of what makes great leaders and how whether you're in a leadership position or not in the corporate space, you should embody these principles because it's what makes a team and a company great. And being in the military, talking about his experience in team-oriented environments, the carryover to the corporate workplace is gigantic. So there was a bunch of parallels and it was an incredible speech. But the overlying theme and concept is based on what he wrote his book about, which is extreme ownership. Now, in my opinion, great leaders own everything. They own good outcomes and wins. They own bad outcomes and losses. They own every outcome and are willing to fall on the sword on behalf of their team. And in my opinion, The sooner you accept that everything that happens to you in your life is your fault, the sooner you can be successful, good or bad, circumstances out of your control or not, it doesn't matter. It's up to you to take ownership and make the best of your situation and your circumstances and succeed in spite of how stacked the odds may be against you. And if you look at any hyper successful individual, you will rarely find them placing blame on anyone but themselves Even if it wasn't their fault, whatever the outcome is, if they have a great physique, they own that. 
if they're extremely financially successful or business savvy and a successful entrepreneur, they own that. They own their wins and they own their losses because that's what great leaders do. And in my opinion, the concept of extreme ownership is one of, if not the most critical feature you can have in your personality trait set to be successful. When I embodied this and I understood the concept that it doesn't matter who did it, what matters is that you own it so you can move forward towards a solution. The impact it had on my life personally, my perspective on the world, but also my corporate success, which is something I haven't talked about at length on the podcast yet, but we're going to talk about today because I think a lot of you are in corporate nine to fives and <clears throat> maybe it's not the dream. Maybe it's not the passion, but you want to move up. You want to take on more responsibility. Ultimately, you want to earn more money to build the lifestyle and the life you want, right? It's a means to achieve your financial security, though it might not be the dream. But if you want to do that, extreme ownership is critical. And we're going to talk about that. So owning all outcomes is something most people in this world fail to do in work, in life, and fitness. So the first thing I'm going to go into is how in your work life, in your nine to five job, extreme ownership will help you. And if you think about the great leaders, if you start to study great leaders, you'll realize they embody these principles sometimes without even realizing it. And if you do these things, you will just organically rise to the cream of the crop, rise to the very top. In my job, starting in 2020 when I graduated, peak COVID, May 2020, <clears throat> I was hired on to a company that had not hired a college graduate possibly ever on their sales force. It had always, in order to work at this company, you had to have experience. And I came out of a program, a sales program, and they were looking for sales reps. So I had leverage. I had two years of sales training, a degree in professional sales. I was the captain of the national sales team, and I had won a national collegiate sales competition. So they knew I knew how to sell. So I had leverage. So I had the opportunity to go and work for this company and have them take a chance on me. And I was basically their guinea pig. It was a mess. There was tons of issues. It was an incredible learning experience, but the company itself had a lot of kinks. However, with all of these gaps and all of these opportunities for improvement, there came a ton of opportunities for me to rise to the top. Tons of opportunities to take ownership, take initiative. And one of the things I learned quickly in that Jocko keynote speech, because it was like two months after I started, was <clears throat> own the failures of your teammates. He talked about he made a bad call on an airstrike in the Middle East or something to that effect. Or no, someone else had made a bad call on his team, and he said it was his fault. He told his commanding officer it's his fault. He didn't make the call. He didn't have anything to do with it. But he took the fall. He fell on the sword. And I started to do that. In my company, there were tons of mistakes made, broken processes. And on top of it all, there was an extreme lack of accountability in the culture. So when someone messed up, there was a lot of finger pointing going on in opposite directions. But the problem with finger pointing is the more time you spend finger pointing and trying to f find a person to blame, that is time that could have been spent directing toward a solution, which if you're in a services role like we are, it's all about the client. So the goal is the solution. And something else my, you know, my dad told me early on was whatever you do, try to embody the principle of attack problems, not people. That's what good leaders do. And every single time, if my engineer messed up my proposal that I had to present to the client and that made me look like a fool, I never would say, my engineer messed this up, I'll fix this for you. I would say, I apologize, I made that mistake or we, we totally missed that part, we made that mistake. I never placed blame on a singular individual. And in doing that, one, it looks good because you never speak ill of people. And two, the quicker that I was able to say, guys, this is my fault, I should have caught this, let's figure it out, the quicker everyone's fingers lowered and we got to a solution and we got to the right option or alternative or end outcome that we were looking for. So every single time I fell on the sword as quickly as possible, I noticed that we were getting to solutions faster. So in your team-oriented environment, in your sales job, your corporate job, if you have the opportunity to do that, do it. It's noble, it's humble, and it helps you actually get to the desired outcome more quickly. Not only that, when you do that, and again, I've talked about how corporate life is a game. When you do that, the law of reciprocity takes place. Eventually, if you give enough to someone or you help enough people, they feel psychologically inclined to give you something in return. Now, I'm not saying exploit that, but that is a law of human nature. <clears throat> the more I was able to do for my teammates in terms of falling on the sword for them, owning outcomes for them, I found them going out of their way to speak highly of me to their leaders, their bosses, other people on the team, and then 
in turn causing them to look to me to be the problem solver, to be the leader, to be the one they look to for solutions when there was nothing but problems floating around in the air. And that put me in the opportunity to take on more responsibility, to take on leadership opportunities, and ultimately earn more income. And it all started with the fact that I never pointed fingers. I did my very best to just say, it's my fault. And if you can do that, you will be successful. Just like I said earlier, the sooner you can accept that everything that happens to you, good or bad, is your fault, the sooner you will make more money, be more fit, be more successful, and ultimately be happier and more fulfilled in your life, relationships, and job. It's a great feeling. Let me, my phone needs to be on, do not disturb here. It's a great feeling to be that person for somebody or be that leader for a team, but it's difficult. You, know, you have to be willing to fall on that sword. So <clears throat> what I found as a result of my three years of doing that was I was able to increase my income by 40% in three years and be touted highly in the eyes of management for a leadership position within my third year there. Now I left to go to a different job in a different sector that was a step up and the company was a little bit more organized. But the point is, it all started with my ownership of outcomes, wins and losses. It's critical you own both, okay? The last thing I'll say about that in work is <clears throat> if you're an entrepreneur and you know, let's say you get into business with a business partner, I've had this happen to me and your business partner totally fucks you over. Maybe they steal money from you. Maybe they, you find out they have terrible habits or vices. It's all their fault if they do those things to you, but it's your fault for letting it happen. It's your fault for not being educated enough and not being, I guess, particular enough or cautious enough in making a choice before partnering with that person. That's how I looked at it when I had a business partner that took advantage of me in the past and things I was doing a long time ago. It was my fault and it was a learning experience. I said, this is a failure, but the feedback is I should have been more cautious. I should have been more weary. I now know what I won't do moving forward. And then I moved forward because I didn't put my energy into blaming someone else for something that happened to me because ultimately it's my fault. Are you seeing the trend here? The quicker you own things, the quicker you can actually move past and move through them and not delegate your mental energy, which is a finite tank of resource you have every day that fills up when you wake up and starts to drain as the day goes on. You can put that towards moving forward and being solution and outcome oriented. So in your job, whether it's your entrepreneurial efforts, good or bad, whether you're getting screwed over by your business partner, screwed over by your boss, it's your fault. It's that simple. Next thing I'll talk about in extreme ownership is fitness. I think it's so easy for people to place the blame on their ex external circumstances for how they look and feel because that is comfortable. They, they paint the illusion that they can't change because that's safe and it makes sense and change would require immense amounts of discomfort. It doesn't matter what kind of change, whether you're changing business or accounting systems in your entrepreneurial endeavor whether you're changing your physique, your habits, change is uncomfortable. And we as humans are not wired to like discomfort. Our brain wants to keep us safe. It doesn't want to keep us shredded. It wants to keep us alive. It's an evolutionary adaptation. And someone commented on my video about getting 10,000 steps per day saying, I work from home and get 2,000 steps a day in my sedentary job. You're crazy if you think I'm going to waste my precious evening spending four hours getting steps. First off, that is an extreme example of victim mindset. You work from home, which means you're 10 steps away from stepping outside and taking a 10 minute walk. You are creating an environment that feeds your shit behavior. And there are a lot of you out there probably listening to this right now that are doing something like that in one facet of your life. You're creating a limitation for yourself based on environments and circumstances out of your control, thereby not pushing past them and accepting where you are. And that is toxic and it's idiotic, honestly. The best way I ever heard it put simply is <clears throat> you may come from extreme poverty, extreme lack of education, extreme obesity in your family. You may come from every negative external circumstance that you can possibly imagine, think of, or conjure. And to sit in those and be the same, you would be justified. It would make sense and everyone would say, that's okay. Or you can succeed in spite of those. Because the fact of the matter is someone had it worse than you or was busier than you and did or is doing it better than you. So what is your excuse, truly? That's what it comes down to. I can't control certain things that have happened to me in my upbringing, my family lineage, my genetics, my prior habits or actions that I took that I can no longer change, 
but I do have inside of my locus of control things that I can adopt, adapt, and improvise and improve upon regardless of those circumstances. You know, it's okay to be fat. It's not okay to stay fat. It's okay to be broke, but it's not okay to stay broke. What's not okay is living this life, not doing everything you can to claw and fight and scratch your way out of whatever circumstance you come from. Financially, physically, emotionally, it doesn't matter. Everything's your fault. Remember that. I say that with love. So for most people, it's easier for them to say, well, my parents were fat, never taught me how to eat well, and I couldn't leave the table until my plate was clean. So that's just how I am. Okay. My parents weren't fat, but they didn't know anything about nutrition. They grew up in the 50s. My dad was born in 53, my mom in 56. Now they've both gotten a better handle on it because of yours truly. But we grew up eating casseroles and fried chicken for dinner. And I was heavy my whole life. I wasn't obese, but I was fat. I was bullied. I was overweight. I had a gut. I had rolls. And that fucked with me my whole life. And I didn't. I was totally unconsciously incompetent to the fact that there was different ways to eat and move and train and live and think out there. But I went out and found it. Now, I could have said, well, my parents never taught me anything, so I've just never thought about what I could possibly do to change it. Maybe I would have been justified, at least in my own mind. But for Christ's sakes, we have YouTube. You're watching this on YouTube probably or Spotify where all of this free information from PhDs, MDs, just overall geniuses exist at no charge to you. It's all of the tools and resources and information you need for anything you could possibly want the answer to is out there right now and it's a keystroke away. So if you are struggling with that in your fitness, it is genuinely time to look yourself in the mirror and say, I've got to take ownership of this. This is my fault. My parents' perspectives, lack of knowledge on life, the reason we were poor, that's not my fault. But me staying in this circumstance, in this pool, in this habit is my fucking fault. And the sooner you can accept that, the more successful you'll be. You see a trend, you see a parallel. I am just telling you based on my experience and the guy who founded the principle, who's a wildly successful elite performer who wakes up every day at 4 a.m. and trains and has made millions of dollars and been a part of the most elite military team on the planet. I'm just going to assume the guy knows a little bit about how to succeed and excel. And I know that personally, when I embodied his principles, I drastically increased my income. I drastically increased my physique. I drastically improved my relationships because I accepted that everything was my fault. And if you do that, you are so much better than the average person, especially in this day and age. I love what Dana White and David Goggins have said about success in the fact that in this world, it has never been easier to be successful because on the whole, everyone is soft. Everyone is wired and built for comfort. We have a constant dopamine drip right here in our cellular devices that has more computer power than the computer that got the astronauts to the moon at NASA. And it's the size of a freaking notepad, a small notepad. Or we can literally have food delivered to our home. We can have 3,000 calories delivered to us at the lift of a finger and never get off the damn couch. We have heating and air conditioning and consistent clean water whenever we need them. We have a society completely built upon comfort to keep us complacent. I won't get into the tinfoil hat stuff. I don't want to get into how society keeps us complacent. Anyway, the point is, like Dana White says, if you're just even a weekend savage, if two days a week you go out and get after it, you have a great physique, your finances are where they need to be, you're emotionally relatively stable, healthy, kind, you're in the top 1% of human beings because most people aren't like that. I see it every day in my TikTok comments, people projecting the lives and realities they hate onto me, telling me I'm wrong, I'm privileged, I'm an asshole, that's impossible for most people working corporate jobs. They're projecting their failures onto me. And when you start trying to make yourself better and become, I'm not even going off the fucking notes anymore. When you try to make yourself better, people will start to project the things that they hate about themselves onto you because you are outgrowing them. And that makes them uncomfortable. And that may happen on your journey. You may outgrow girlfriends or boyfriends or best friends, lifelong best friends. And that's okay. I, Hormozy talks about, I know I reference Hormozy a lot. There's a reason I like the way he views the world. Hormozy talks a lot about how he's, he ran into a guy he grew up with or something to that effect. And the person said, oh my God, you've changed. And he said, yeah, you haven't. The point of life is to change. There's a great meme or a graphic of, a caterpillar 
talking to a butterfly, I think. I think that's what it is. And the caterpillar says, wow, you've changed. And the butterfly says, I've never been more myself. And that's exactly what happens is you start to try to get the most you can out of yourself and your life. You start to really come into your own and develop a healthy sense of identity and self-esteem. And a lot of people don't have that, no matter where they are in life. In your mid-20s like I am, definitely. But even in your 30s, 40s, and 50s, there are people that never get their shit together and figure it out. And if you're in their life and they start to see you doing that, they'll either support you because they're doing the same thing and you'll never be shit on by anybody doing better than you. Remember that. Or they'll start to demean you, be derogatory, poke fun at you, or maybe say that thing that's a little too passive aggressive. And when you snap, say, it's just a joke, relax. It's not a joke. It's really how they feel. It's always really how they feel. But you have to accept that if you want to get the most out of yourself, if you want to own your life and own your outcomes, there are going to be people that don't like that and they are always projecting. I see it in my TikTok comments every day. I literally have a guy right now who doesn't follow me. He's coming into all of my videos and saying negative, horrendous shit about me, how I'll never make it and how my page sucks. And I don't care because I know whoever that person is, is projecting a reality onto themselves or onto me rather that they genuinely hate. And for that reason, the only thing I have ever said to him is I wish you the best. I hope you figure out whatever you're going through. Much love. And I mean that like it is a bless your heart situation. It is not an I'm angry at you situation because how miserable do you have to be to make someone who's trying to do the right thing feel worse about themselves? And I want you all to remember that because if you're listening to me yap right now, you're on some sort of journey to self-improvement and that is going to be a natural progression. You are going to never feel more like yourself as the butterfly and your caterpillar friends are going to say, oh my, you've changed. And that's what you have to be willing to say. You can't regress back towards the caterpillars and say, you're right. You have to say, I've never felt more like myself and keep moving. And the right people will fall into your life as they should. The last thing I'll say about ownership, and I should have said this is what happens when you go off the notes. I got fired up and now I'm not even reading my notes and I'm sorry, but I think that it's an important concept about ownership that creates you and helps you evolve into, into coming into your own is the, the biggest problem I found with, with not taking ownership of situations or outcomes in your life is that when you place responsibility or, or blame on others or circumstances or situations or human beings, you take your power away. Regardless of what it is, objectively, if you're in a situation you say, I am this because of that or them, you now have no power in your own mind to change anything. And that's going to just like a cancer just spread across your mindset into other facets of your life. And when I think about it, when I heard someone say that to me, when you give others blame or other circumstances blame, you take away your own power and control. I thought, oh my God, why would I want to do that? And also that's absolutely true. Why would anybody want to do that? How could you not want to embody the mindset of this is my fault because I'm terrified of what will happen if I say it's not. Because if I say that, I can no longer do anything about it. That is, that sounds like hell to me, personally. Taking everything that happens to me and placing it on someone else, therefore, I am this helpless, feeble, sorry-ass excuse for a human being. That sounds like my version of hell. So if you're going through that right now or you're dealing with that in any facet of your life, maybe you're crushing it in fitness, but you're placing the reason that your business isn't succeeding on you, Get your shit together. Take that mindset and put it in the business and you will be more successful. And if it doesn't work, it's still your fault. It's time to pivot, move forward, try something new. If you got anything from this episode, it's that I feel very passionate. No, I'm just kidding. I do feel very passionately about this, but I just want you to take away that ownership of your life is truly, in my opinion, the only path to success and that no matter what happens to you, you have to own the outcome, good or bad. Always own the outcome on behalf of others, on behalf of yourself, on behalf of circumstances that are out of your control. And then you focus on your locus of control and you hammer it and improve it. And you be aware of your locus of concern. Those are all the things you can't control, but you keep pushing forward regardless. And no matter how bad you have it, if you continue to maintain that mindset, you will be better off in a year. Even if it's only a little bit, you will still be in a better position. That's all I have to say about ownership. If you got something valuable out of this podcast, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. It really does help me. And drop a comment and let me know what you thought. Let me know what your thoughts are on ownership. If you feel like I'm wrong about this, I'd love to hear it. I'd love to debate on this topic. 
but we'll close out now with the tradition, which is a step check. It's 129 Eastern Standard Time, and I am at 4,704 steps. Not bad. Easily going to hit 15,000 by the end of the day. Going to wrap up this podcast, pack all my stuff up, and go straight to the gym to do some heavy squats. So I hope everybody has a great week listening to this. I hope you got at least one valuable tidbit of information about this, or from this rather. And remember, own the outcome and be successful. Isn't easy, but it is simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Have a good day.